Alzheimer's. I was diagnosed 10 years ago, before which I was a primary school head teacher and a local authority advisor and doing a master's in leadership. And all that came to a close 10 years ago. And this new door opened up to me uh, around being an Alzheimer's Society ambassador and envoy um, in, in Kenton Medway. And I'm genuinely delighted to be here today alongside some eminent friends and allies and to be supported in co-presenting with Danny Tingley, who recently helped me in writing an introduction for Julian's excellent book on ethics and dementia. Not wishing to waste time further on introducing myself, there is plenty about me out there on the internet for those who are interested. I want to spend the time addressing the issue of the importance of values, science and rights through my lens as a person who is 10 years down this pathway. First and foremost, I see life through my own values, which are based upon fairness, honesty, truth and social justice. I have marched as a student for this in the 70s and then campaigned for it as a teacher, later advocating for it as a head and advisor in Kent, trying to implement the Blair government's vision of placing the child at the centre of the system rather than fragmented services of education, health, social services and the police. A good training ground for what's followed since I've taken up the baton of rights and values relating to dementia. Professionally and personally, my practice was and still is based upon my values, which in turn are intrinsically linked to my, right, to my rights and those of others who share my world either directly or indirectly. I value my family and my friends above everything else. And in valuing myself, I see myself as far more than what the neuropsychology tests revealed, placing me in the lowest fifth to 10th centile when I was assessed 10 years ago. And I knew full well what that meant. I value learning and intellect. I value knowledge, but far more, I value constructive attitudes and skills, many of which no cognitive test can, can measure. I've always used my values as the basis for any decision making, both in my former professional life, my current role in the dementia world, and throughout my personal interactions with others. My values are consistent and they will never change. What does from time to time change is my approach to seeing how those values can best achieve positive outcomes for me and for others with dementia. To do this, I always return to the five dementia statements, which to remind you are, could you bring them up please and get rid of me on the screen there. Thank you. I'm not going to read them to you because we're all capable of reading, but I do want to pick out some key words. I want to pick out the word we, because these statements relate to both parts of the dementia family and also the word rights. Those two words appear in each of those five statements, which relate first of all to identity, then to care, community, carers and research. And I'll leave that slide up throughout the rest of my presentation. I have glued these firmly into my diary, which in normal times I carry with me to remind me of the statements. And if appropriate, I bring them to the attention of others. Whilst I recognise these rights are unconditional, I fully also recognise that some rights come with responsibilities upon both the recipient and the person seeking to uphold those rights on our behalf. Allied to this comes expectations which, if unfulfilled, at least causes frustration and at worst all that Kit would refer to as malignant social psychology. How often do those of us with dementia experience this? And of course, during these COVID times, we have experienced this and much worse. 
one value I hold dear is honesty and truth. How often do we seek this from those in power? And for me, these statements are only of use and value if embedded in law and policy under a legal lens. Then I become more optimistic and positive about their use. From 2018 to 2019, I thought we were moving forward and our rights were being better considered. I had with the support of Philly and Rosemary, my wife, who is with me today, taking the rights of those with dementia to the United Nations CRPD in Geneva, alongside the outstanding deep document, Our Dementia, Our Rights. I commend that to you. This resulted in some government movement and after a sensitive meeting with senior civil servants, where I encouraged them in a number of directions based upon the statements, some of which significantly contributed to success, e.g. the blue badge for people with dementia. Then my enthusiasm was further fueled when I was able to take the issue of our rights to the ADI World Dementia Conference in Chicago in 2018 where the statements and the UK were looked upon as an advance guard in this world campaign. Without any doubt, life since March 2020 has negatively impacted upon everything, not least of which these statements, what these statements aspired towards. As we, that is the key word, and I mean we as a collective people affected by dementia, with a diagnosis or a family member and professionals and anyone who has any interest or engagement with dementia move forward towards a new normal in 2021, we must see values in the way people are treated fairly and decently upheld consistently, where the person and not the system or the process do really come first in the care of those affected by dementia. That is, I feel, the right of everyone with dementia, not just to expect this, but to see it happen. I'm going to close my piece and then hand over the baton to Danny by expressing my thoughts on our rights through the emotional medium of poetry, because I'm convinced that creativity contributes greatly to resilience. And I commend this book to you, Time and Place, Collected Poems, written by people with dementia during lockdown. And it is a fabulous feel good read and available for 4 99 from Amazon. There's the plug, and all the money goes to deep, all the profits go to deep. The poem, Our Rights. Did we really take this opportunity to make the most of chances we had? Did we embrace the challenge more fully to move from what we knew was bad? To aim for the brightest of stars, though happy to settle for the moon, to dance to the melodic tune, sorry, to dance to the melodic waltz, taking the baton to call the tune. A right to be seen, a right to be heard, a right to feel safe, a right to spread the word. Let us vision united we stand with our backs pressed against the wall, our heads held high undaunted, knowing we never will fall. The statements came at the right time, launched with a fanfare of hope. Example of true collaboration, to help us all better cope. A right to co-produce, a right to create, a right to go solo, a right not to frustrate. Let us now take full heed of the messages shared today to make tomorrow a sunnier one for all and keep the demon dementia at bay. Over to you, Danny. Thanks, Keith. Um, when Keith initially asked me to say a few words at this conference, I thought to myself, what could I possibly bring to a conference on rights and dementia? What on earth would I, as an assistant psychologist, be able to teach others? Upon thinking about it, I realised that there are many things that I could say, as fundamentally this conference is about people with dementia people who I am surrounded by and learn so much from each day. 
I realised that actually the rights of people with dementia is something I discuss on a daily basis and something I try to enforce in every piece of work that I do within our trust. I specifically work with rights in mind with one of our service user groups. Uh, these empowered group members essentially advocate for those with dementia to educate the public and to promote support and rights for those with dementia. From this service user group, I have an insight into the difficulties that they face on a daily basis. For example, with people expecting them to have a carer with them, despite the fact that they're living independently or not being spoken directly to due to bringing that friend or relative to that appointment. Our service users essentially just want the right to the value-based practice of person-centered care, treating the individual rather than the dementia, and more importantly, seeing the person rather than the dementia. A story from one of our service users really touched me. She explained to me that she had decided to join a dementia group who were having a day trip out. Upon arriving at that day trip, she was asked, where is your carer? She kindly explained that she does not need a carer and is still very independent. The lady hosting the group said to her, well, of course you need a carer. You have dementia. We cannot be expected to look after everyone. Her experience really shocked me. I was surprised that within the 21st century, her right to attend a day trip was being questioned due to a misunderstanding of a diagnostic label attached to her. A label which you cannot see and may not have picked up on through interacting with her as she's still so competent and independent. Rights for people with dementia are even more challenged right now with delays in assessment, scans, diagnosis and treatment as our NHS is stretched during the current pandemic. There are additional different difficulties in bringing people together to share experiences and to realise that they're not alone with this condition. The increasing use of video conferencing will leave some people with dementia without the access to these conversations as they're not able to use the appropriate technology. I acknowledge that the awareness of rights for people with dementia are changing. It's amazing to see the developments through the deep network and having more of our service users on consultation boards with various companies. Examples of collaborating, uh, collaboratively working with people with dementia. And I'm super excited to see what the future holds for the rights of people with dementia. Thank you.